True story, I had placental abruption with my twins at 31 weeks. I knew it was happening. Uh, I'm an OBGYN, I knew the signs. And what happened is I had an acute onset of abdominal pain. My uterus was very hard, contracted and not relaxing. I had no vaginal bleeding though, but I knew that because my uterus was not relaxing and it was staying rock hard, that I was having a placental eruption. And that led to emergent delivery uh, via cesarean um, of my twins. So I wanna share some info on cases of acute placental abruption, not chronic, that's different, another video, but acute placental abruption. This is from up to date. Placental abruption refers to partial or complete separation of the placenta from the decidua, which is the interface between the placenta and the uterine wall. And partial or complete means you can have a complete placental abruption where the placenta completely comes away from the uterine wall, or you, it can be partial where there are sections or a portion of the placenta that comes away from the uterine wall. Placental abruption occurs anytime after 20 weeks of gestation and before delivery. It can be classified as mild or severe. Um, mild means there's not a lot of bleeding or a, not a lot of separation. Severe means a lot of separation of that placenta, even complete, and there's going to be some vaginal bleeding or bleeding internally. Rupture of maternal arterial, arterial venous or venous vessels in the decidual base cells is the direct cause of the separation. Risk factors, acute etiology, other uh, obstetric medical risk factors, then down here, sociodemographic behavioral risk factors, you can pause to read. Now for how patients present when they have an acute placental eruption. The class of presentation is abrupt onset of vaginal bleeding. Yes, most patients with placental eruption will have vaginal bleeding, but remember, not all patients have vaginal bleeding. So if there's no vaginal bleeding, it does not mean there's no chance that it's a placental eruption. Some of the worst placental eruption cases I've managed had zero vaginal bleeding. They're gonna have mild to moderate abdominal pain and or back pain and uterine contractions, which may be high frequency and low amplitude or even a normal labor pattern. But what I find and what typically happens is the uterus gets really hard and doesn't relax in between contractions. And there's abdominal pain. So when you touch the uterus, it feels like it's in a tonic, contractive state. The uterus is often firm and maybe rigid and tender. You can have fetal heart rate patterns, uh, maybe non-reassuring, so that's where fetal monitoring comes in. It's very important that if you suspect placental abruption that you have the patient on the monitor, not only to assess the contraction pattern of the uterus, but to look at what the fetal heart rate is doing. Um, and then you can pause to read the rest. So some key takeaways. The absence of vaginal bleeding does not rule out placental abruption. A uterus that is hard and tender and doesn't relax consider placental abruption and get that fetus on the monitor. Get blood products ready.